I'm going to be covering how I go about capturing flats, uh, why you should consider capturing flats, and just along that whole process how I do this, and then hopefully you'll find this helpful. First of all, uh, I'm going to be covering just regular plain old vanilla flats, not dark flats or any other kind of fancy flats that you may hear of, just the normal standard flats. Um, the reason is I'm doing just EAA, I'm looking at this real time, and going with the other types of flats, I, I don't see a big enough improvement to justify the additional work. So first of all, why do you want to capture flats and what do flats fix? Um, flats, flats fix two things, vignetting and dust donuts. Those are the two main things. Vignetting is what you get when you, as you see in the screen here, is you get this bright uh, image here and then it gets darker as you go out. You'll often see this, uh, you know, the more you aggressively stretch, you know, I can make it in a sense go away if I move this over, but you'll still see it happening in the corners. Uh, so the good thing about the adding the flats is it lets you kind of stretch a little bit more aggressively to get better, uh, you know, to be able to see your image better. And this is, you know, the main reason to do it. And it just has a huge improvement, and I'll show a little later. So that's the first thing that you're trying to correct for is this vignetting. Now, you may not see this. It all depends on your tire setup. Uh, this tends to happen, you know, with longer focal lengths or larger uh, cameras. So to give you on my uh, I have an 8-inch uh, SCT with a uh, ZWO-294. So with that camera, I get the uh, vignetting. I also have a ZWO-178, and you know that's a much smaller. It's probably about captures about that size right there. So you know I really wouldn't need it there for that particular case. Uh, but the other thing Flat's correct for is for dust donuts, and I'll show you. There's no dust donuts in this image, but I'll show you over here on this image. Here is these round things here are dust donuts. It's basically some dust in your image train. I really needed to clean it up. You can see, you know, these four dust donuts here. I look five, six. So you can see quite a few dust donuts that I've got here that need to be fixed. Up. And, um, that's the other thing Flats will uh, correct for is remove those dust donuts. So that is why those are the two reasons why you want to do it. And to show you the improvement that you can do, so you can see here, you know, if I had something that's covering this whole image, you can see, you know, I'm not seeing much down here. So let's restart the stack. I'm going to add a f the flat that I've been using. Oh, that's not, oh, here it is. So let me go to that flat. Let me restart the stack. Let me clear it. And you, what you're gonna, we're going to see is we're going to see this vignetting disappear. And, you know, this is why we want to, so you can already see it's, you know, clearing on. Yeah, we have lots of noise right now, but let's ignore that for now. Uh, you can see much more clear. And if I, you know, stretch this more back to where we were having problems before, you can see there's, no, you know, it's pretty flat all the way across the screen. So that is why you want to um, capture flats. It's just, it's a huge improvement. If you're seeing vignetting, capturing flats is, you know, literally it takes me five minutes I'll, to do it. I'm going to walk you through how I do it, how you can make it simple. It is, um, you know, you know, that in darks, you know, I always do flats and darks, uh, but you know, darks are much easier kind of thing to do. Uh, flats, you know, darks you only need to do once in a while. Flats I usually do e each time before I image, and I'll explain that when I go about doing that. All right, so let me talk a little bit first about my telescope. I've got an eight-inch SCT here. Uh, you can see I have a uh, focal reducer, six point three. Got a uh, filter holder followed by a flip mirror. This flip mirror I use in order to do uh, mono or color at night. It makes it really easy to switch back and forth. And because of this, actually, I have to take two flats each night, one for the mono, one for the uh, color. But it's really quick, easy because of the flat panel. So that, that is uh, my telescope. Uh, before I get to the flat panel, I want to talk about two other common methods of taking flats. The first one is just after dusk, after the sunset, pointing your telescope up towards the sky and then just using that. Um, that I tried that at first. Uh, I quickly decided that wasn't for me. One of the main reasons is uh, as it gets darker, that 50% curve that you're trying to center, which I'll get to, changes. So it's, it just really makes it a little bit more difficult. And also, for some reason, in the middle, you change, you accidentally change your image train, or you forgot to take the flat, and it's in the middle of the night, well, now what are you gonna do? You can't take one. So that's, that's, that I quickly went away from. The second method is the white t-shirt method. So you take a, you got a white t-shirt, you put it over the front of your scope, rubber band here. Now during the day, like right now, what I could do is, you know, you just set it up and you could, uh, you could take your flat here. Uh, so that is the uh, other very common method. And I did that for a while. And that, uh, 
that works all right. Um, it runs into the same problem if for some reason in the middle of the night, in the middle of your, you know, the middle of the night while you're um, viewing the sky, you decide you need to get another flat for whatever reason, then that means that you gotta bring the scope back in and handle that. The other issue is I've got overhead lights and, sorry, and the, the one time I took a flat that was on, overhead light was on, this came on the t-shirt, just completely screwed it up. I didn't realize that until I was out uh, applying the flat. That was just really, really annoying. Um, so yeah, so those are the two, you know, two other methods. Now, the method that I prefer now is using the light panel. Uh, it is the, I think it's just the most consistent method and you know, something that makes it consistent. Flats, you know, really cause a lot of people a lot of problems. Making, getting a flat panel really helps solve a lot of the, you know, inconsistency issues I was getting. You can get these off Amazon, they're pretty cheap, but you will have to do more than likely a couple of things. First off, you'll probably have to get some poster boards or paper so you can dim it down. So you can see here, I've got lots of sheets that I've added in order to dim this down. Uh, you know, how many you have to add, it all depends on what you use and you know, your light panel and whatnot. But again, you're, when you're trying to get the curve down to 50%, that's what will be. So that's the one thing you more than likely have to do. Two other optional things. One of the things that I did is I added a black piece of cardboard on the back because the light panel is, you can see, is that that way. And again, because of the overhead lights, I didn't want to have to worry about an overhead light, shining light through here and somehow screw up my flat. And the last thing that I did is I took a piece of cut cardboard, I cut it in the shape of my front of my scope here, such that I could just slide it on and it holds there with no problems at all. Um, this is convenient because this, if you don't do that, then you have to just make sure your scope's aimed straight up when you do it. And then that's all held together by a couple of binder clips. And then all you do to take your flat is drop that on there, make sure that's on there, plug this in to your USB port, and you know, voila, the flat, you know, depending on your panel, you may have to turn it on, my automatically, you know, it turns on, and you're ready to take your flats. So that is, you know, makes it nice and simple. One critical part about taking flats is you can't make any changes to your image train after you take the flat. And by changes, I mean, it can be as simple as unscrewing your camera, cleaning it off, and trying to screw it back exactly the way you had it before. I've tried that before. Um, most of the time, it's unsuccessful. And it's because, you know, especially if you've got dust notes and you're off by a little bit, um, that, that, that will really, really show. You get these real interesting little rings that show up. So in general, if I unscrew the camera, try to tighten it up a little bit, you know what, just retake the flats. It takes less than five minutes to do. It will save you just so much hassle with that. You know, so again, let's say you go through, you're adjusting, maybe you're uh, tightening something. Second you do that, that should, you should retake the flats. Now, can you reuse them? Yeah, I mean, I will typically, if I image tonight and I want to image again the next night and I haven't, you know, I'm pretty confident I haven't changed anything, yes, I will reuse the flat. But if it's been more than, you know, a couple of days, I will more than likely retake the flap. Uh, reason is you just don't know if dust, where dust might have gotten in, or you know what, it, like I said, it only takes less than five minutes. You can do it before it gets dark. It makes life a lot easier. And you know, the light panel also lets you, for some reason, you did mess up, you forgot, you can do it in the middle, you know, you can do it in, you know, during an image session. You know, this happened to me the other night. I realized I must have screwed up the flap, so the flap would look horrible. Uh, so I just went out real quick with the USB, plugged it into my USB. Voila, you know, it just took a couple extra minutes, but you know, using the other methods, that would have been much harder to do. All right, so now let's go on to SharpCap to show you how it's captured. Now we come to the fun part of how we capture the flats in SharpCap. Uh, there are various methods I've read about. I've tried most of them. Um, at the end of the day, I didn't see much difference between them, and not enough to justify the extra work some of them involved. Um, but there's one method that basically says set the gain to zero and then set the, you know, set your uh, exposure to bring the curves to the right part. Another one that says start with a, use a low gain. There's another one that says you want to target 200 to 800 milliseconds and then set the gain appropriately. Another method is, you know, set the, you know, two to three seconds is what you want your exposure. So you'll see all these. You can play around with them. Um, this is what works for me. It, you know, if you can try these different methods. It's quite easy to capture a whole bunch of different methods and then just try them out at night and see which one works the best or better yet to capture the FITS files and you can try it out the next day at your leisure. Okay, so a couple of important things when you capture flats. First of all, um, you want to make sure uh, your brightness, your white balance, uh, your white balance is set to however you can do to capture. That's the um, one thing I've learned that, that seems to work good. Uh, so, you know, which is good because it's something you don't have to play with. Uh, make sure you have no darks, no flats, and you know, no background subtraction applied. That should be all 
off and not apply it. So the goal is, you know, I, my method is a low gain and shooting for between 200 and 800 milliseconds. And you may have to put on extra layers to get uh, on your flat panel to get to there. But, that, you know, that's, a, that's what I try to shoot for. Uh, so you can see here I've got 250 milliseconds at 200 gain. You, and what you're trying to do is get this white curve to cross somewhere around the 50% uh, mark. So you can see I'm not quite there yet. So let's try uh, doubling this to 500 milliseconds. And you can see how now this is basically going over the 50% mark. Um, yeah, I tend to maybe want a little bit more. Quite honestly, that's probably good enough right there. But, you know, okay, uh, we can just bump it up to 600 and just leave it there. So, yeah, you, the other thing is you definitely do not want this green to be clipped way out here. See how this green goes right here? So if I went up to probably 800 milliseconds, you'll see this green getting clipped. That is bad. You do not want that to happen. And, of course, if you've got a mono camera, it's much easier. You just have one white curve to deal with. So let's go back to 600 milliseconds. So you can see we've got this nice curve here. I've got the light panel on. And it's really simple at this point. You do capture. You go to capture flat. Um, you get this dialog coming up. Uh, basically, you want to create monochrome flat. I usually, you know, depending on your, uh, what you're going to do right away, you can say apply to it or not. Click this to none. These two are for a little bit more advanced stuff. Uh, I don't tend to use those, so you, I will just turn that off. Click on start. And, you know, this will take, you know, because we're doing, what, 15 captures, each one half a second. So this takes about seven seconds to capture all, all of our images. You can see down here, you can see the progress that's already disappeared. It's going through its process. And now, you know, it's going to average them out. And then as soon as it's done, we'll see we'll have a flat. So there is, you know... Uh, We'll get that there going in a second. And then once your flat is captured and you start imaging, you just come over here and click on a browse and click on apply flat. So you can see here, here, you can click on this right here. This will open up the folder where the flat is. Uh, sometimes I will label these just for, um, uh, for what I want. So, you know, this one is my MC camera. So I'll often uh, put an MC in front of it because I often, well, each night will image with both my mono camera and my one shot camera. So I just want to make sure they're labeled and I know, know which one what it is. But you can always open up this TXT. And whether you capture flat as fits or PNG, I haven't noticed much of a difference. I tend to just go with fits. Um, but, you know, I have not seen any difference there. So that is the whole process of uh, capturing flats. Uh, it really is a simple process. Literally, you, know, you saw how quickly it, it took here. It takes me just less than five minutes to do. Like I said, I usually do this a couple hours uh, before sunset, make sure everything's good and you know it, is a, it just has a huge improvement if you notice the vignetting or dust nuts you know do it even if you have to do it each time before you set up you know it's the one it's the thing that takes the least amount of time in my setup and it brings a huge bang for my buck all right if you have any questions you know, feel free to ask